coming. The ravens are coming. And they're bringing my provision. Yeah, I didn't even know I had one. But God said when I become obedient and I'll move where he tells me to move, I'll do what he tells me to do, then my supply becomes supernatural. I don't have to worry about it. I don't even have to know where it's at because God knows all about it. And he said if I'll move when he says move, if I'll sow when he says sow, if I'll give when he says give, he said, my provision is already supplied. God's not growing your harvest. Your harvest is already ready. But your seed is the key that releases your harvest into your life. But your seed is natural. But when it's released, it becomes supernatural. And there's not enough devils in hell to take your harvest. If you'll get your rear end into the enemy's camp where it's at and take it back. Well, I don't know. Are you ready? Are you sure you're ready? Because you see, if you're not ready, I want you just to turn your ears off. Because if you say you're ready, we're going on. And once we go on, there ain't no turning back. Are you hearing me? You're going into enemy hell territory. And when you go there, if you're not willing to completely commit to God, the devil will eat your lunch. But if you go and stay committed, God said, don't worry about a thing because I've got you covered. Are you ready to walk where you've not walked before? Are you ready to go where you've not been before? Are you ready to receive an anointing you've never had before? Are you ready to be anointed with an abnormal anointing? The anointing upon the, the disciples when they came out of the upper room was not normal, it was abnormal. They were laughed at, they were ridiculed, they were put in prison. But while they sat there in the Roman jail, then Paul did not worry who would go his bail. Because when the Lord got ready, he had to move, he sent a big old angel. And Paul sang the the praises of God from the jail cell uh, in Rome. I'm here to tell you God will anoint you with a supernatural anointing uh, that there's not a demon in hell uh, that can stand up against the anointing that God will place upon your life. But I'm not sure you're ready. Are you sure you're ready? Are you ready? Then stand and shout, I'm ready. Say, I'm ready. Are you sure you're ready? Say, I'm ready. I'm ready. Oh, you don't sound to me like an army. Are you really ready? Now, I know it's hot out there, but you couldn't possibly be as hot as I am. Say, I'm ready. So to help us understand, uh, I'll take you to a story in 1 Kings 17. There is five characters in here. It's Ahab. Oh, miserable, wicked Ahab. The worst king that Israel ever had. We're living in the worst sin and degra degradation that has ever been known to mankind. And we, the church, has allowed it to happen. We can't blame politics. We can't blame the neighbor. Because uh, as the church goes and the strength of the church, so goes the politics of the land. The truth hurts sometimes. But there was Ahab. And then there was Jezebel. Brother Steve preached on Jezebel last night. And then there was 
Elijah, the prophet. Then there was a bird called the raven. You got to understand about this bird. He's a big old long black bird. He steals his food, and when he goes after it, he plucks the eyes of his prey out. If the devil can keep you blinded, you'll never advance in the kingdom of God. The devil is after the light in the house of God. If the enemy wanted to destroy uh, Africa, they go after the power source first. Because when the power is gone, things can't work. There's no life. There's no strength. There's no energy. So this bird would pluck the eyes of its prey out and then steal its resources. He's a selfish bird. Don't want to give to nobody. That's his nature. He's just mean. Sounds like the devil. <laughs> and then there was the widow woman of Zarephath that we may or may not get to in this session. I'm trying to do three ser sermons for you in one today. But we find this story begins uh, around uh, chapter 17. You know the story. Elijah had said, there not be dew nor rain in these years, but according to my word. Uh, you will change a nation when you walk into the king and say, if you don't straighten your act up, your firstborn's going to die. And it happens. I'm talking to you about an anointing. If God did it for Elijah, he'll do it for you. I'm talking about an anointing. When you make the king so mad, he puts you in jail, but an angel comes and opens the lock. I'm not talking to you about anything, pastor, that you can't find in the Word of God. We have sold the Holy Ghost short, Steve, on his power. Jesus said, I must go back to the Father, but before I do, I have all power. Not part of the power. I have all power and authority. And I'm going back, but I'm going to give you the authority, the legal right to use my name. And at the name of Jesus, every name has to bow and give way. And he said, it's necessary that I go back. I'm giving you the authority now. And when I go back, the power is going to come. You see, it's no good to have power if you don't have authority to use the power. And we've got a church today that doesn't even have the power, much less understand we have the authority. You have all the authority of heaven behind you. And you have all the power of heaven behind you. He made the heavens and the earth. He made those trees out there in the sky. He made the wood that made the chairs and the benches that you sit upon. This is the power. He has the power to make the uh, ocean out there stay within its bounds with sand. And we think he don't have enough power to take care of us? I'm not talking to you about a little bit of anointing. And Elijah said, It will not rain, Ahab, until I say it's going to rain. And it's time that we have our prophets rise up 
and speak on our behalf. Are you hearing me? You see, this gets a little far out, but let me tell you, it's not going to happen. It's already happening. We have to have this anointing to bring in the harvest because we've got to gather it quickly because the Bible says in the last days there'll be a quick work. We don't have long to work. We've got to bring in the harvest. So Elijah says, there shall not be due no rain, but according to my word. And uh, God is just about to bring drought in your enemy's camp. And he can't function when God brings, instead of you living in drought, God's going to bring drought into your enemy's camp. And his tongue's going to hang out with thirst. His eyes are going to get plugged out so he can't see. God's going to cover you with his glory. Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah after he caused the drought and said, Elijah, get thee hence. Go up by the brook Cherith, and there I want you to stay. And he said, when you get up there, Elijah, you shall drink water from the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you. Elijah didn't question God like some of you are doing right now. The raven's nature is not, it's not going to feed anyone. And besides that, God don't feed his man with dead, rotten flesh. What God gives you is live and good. So Elijah didn't think a thing about it because, see, Elijah knew God. That's the problem with the church. We know about God, but we don't know God. Elijah knew God and knew that when he said, the ravens will feed you and you'll drink water from the brook, that that was exactly what would happen. He wasn't worried. His only duty was to trust and obey. Believe the Lord your God and so shall you be established. Believe his prophets and so shall you prosper. So Elijah goes on up uh, to the brook and he sits down there. Well, he's not worried because after all, he serves the God that gave a manna in the wilderness and water from a rock. And he just uh, climbs up the mountain and, and goes up to the brook that's beyond Jordan and sits down there and, and begins to look at the brook and relax and wait for God. Oh, it's good sometimes to wait for God. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with eagles. And they shall run and not grow weary. God will put a spirit of might upon you. That you can go when you, uh, uh, everything says you're not supposed to be able to go. But something in you rises up and you go. So Elijah goes up there and did according as the word of the Lord said. And, and sat down by the brook Jordan and waited for the ravens. Now, i got to uh, tell you something. There was drought in the land, if you remember. And where was the raven going to get the food? And so I can see this big old raven. I can see him as he got up that morning. And he thought, well, I better go get my food. And he started to fly one direction. But all of a sudden, as he's trying to fly this direction, there's a current of wind. And he can't fly that direction. He's going this direction. And he really don't know why. But he finds himself down in Ahab's storage bin. Right into enemy territory. And he goes down and he gets clean food. And he thinks, well, I don't understand. Maybe I'll take it back and let it decay. But he's got all this bread and this fresh meat from Ahab's storage room. And he thinks he gets out the window and he starts to fly back to his nest. But wait a minute. He can't go back. The wind is bringing him. And suddenly he finds himself up by the brook sheriff. And, and, and he's hanging on to that stuff. And God just hits his hand. And he has to drop it right at the brook. Proverbs says, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. <laughs> I don't know where
whether God can trust you or not. And every day the ravens came. Look at your neighbor and say, the ravens are coming. And they're bringing my provision. Now that was a supernatural source. And Elijah didn't have to do a thing to get it. But the saga continues. Have you? Have I got time? Oh, Lord. No, not really. Because this man, I'm supposed to be done in 10 minutes. You want me to go on? Then one day, I try to hurry. How about that? Then one day, God said, Elijah, get up. Arise! God says, arise. Something's going to happen. Arise, church. Your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. No, oh, I wish I could tell you what's happening in this building. He said, Arise, Elijah. Get up and go down to Zarephath. And when God said that, the raven didn't fly anymore. And the brook dried up. God can dry things up real quick. You see, some of you feel like that right now. You feel like everything's just dead in your life. No, baby, God's ready to change your season. That's all. Don't worry about a thing. He found out that you were obedient. You went when you didn't know how you was going to go. You didn't know where the provision was going to come from. But God supernaturally got you here. But now that you're here, he's going to tell you what's required of you. He said, Elijah, rise up and go down to Zarephath and dwell there. Dwell means to set up a homestead, to sow seed and reap a harvest. See, Elijah knew what God was saying. And he said, Zarephath, they don't mean much unless you understand something. Zarephath was Jezebel's headquarters. Seven miles from where the widow woman was at was the headquarters of Baal. And Jezebel is hot on the trail of Elijah. She's looking for him. She's going to kill him. And God says, Elijah, arise and go down to Zarephath. Go right into the town of the enemy. And there you'll find a widow woman. And she shall sustain you. And when he went down, sure enough, I've got to leave some of this out. When he went down, sure enough, there he found the widow woman. And she was picking up sticks. Actually, when you read on over in the chapter, he said she was picking up two sticks. She didn't expect much of a fire. Your fire and your anointing will be in direct obedience to your willingness to give. God comes and consumes sacrifice. He doesn't never come unless there's a sacrifice on the altar. But when there's a sacrifice made and laid on the altar and seed is sown, then God comes down with the fire of his glory to consume your sacrifice and leaves all of his attributes. Are they just being quiet because they're listening? Okay. God's got you covered because you got a seed in your hand that's going to bring you into a continual supply of his glory. So the, uh, the God had kept the widow woman hid from Jezebel. But now, she's been in the drought. Some of you feel like you've been in a drought. That's all right. God's getting ready to rain on your season. Are you hearing me? Oh, and she sees Elijah coming. And he says, woman. And she said, yes, sir. She knew he was a prophet. And, and, and Elijah said, woman, fetch me a little drink of water. And she went and got him a glass of water. Are you hearing me? Not a little dab. She didn't. Now, I didn't teach you God to make you rich, but God will supply your need every day. He won't supply today for tomorrow, but he'll supply your need. What happened with that woman? 
every time she went back to that barrel, she said, had exactly what she needed. If she was going to have 25 of her relatives in that day to feed, she had 25, enough meal and oil to make 25 cakes. You hear me? He didn't say just her and her son ate. It said the widow woman and her son and all her household. And I'm about to close. God breathed once when he created man. There lay man and God. And man became a living soul. And then at Pentecost, the power had to come and be restored to the church. But the Bible teaches that the prophets looked down through the telescope of time and desired to live in the season that you and I live in. Because we are going to have greater power than the book of Acts. We're going to have enough power to get him back from heaven to receive his bride. And the Bible says you can't do this yourself and it's not even about you. It's so God's purpose can be performed in the earth and God himself is preparing and robing the bride. Oh, but I think we're so choice that God would select us. And on the day of Pentecost, the Bible says, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a mighty rushing wind. And God breathed his power into the remnant infant church. Let me tell you something. God is ready this morning to breathe life again into a dead church. God's breathing again. And this is the third and last time. He only does things three times. Are you understanding me? He wants to breathe life into your dead situation. It doesn't matter what's going on in your life. God himself wants to breathe life into your dead situation. And if you'll be obedient, the ravens will bring the supernatural supply. It's not our job to wonder where it's coming from. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory. I came here this to tell you the ravens are coming. The ravens are coming, and they're bringing your supernatural supply. I want my brother to come and sing my song right now, and I want you to stand and declare before God, the ravens are coming. My supply don't come from the government. My supply comes from heaven. The ravens are coming, and they bring my supernatural sword. But I want you to just stand and rejoice and shout and sing because I am declaring to you that the ravens are coming. They're flying. Come on. The ravens are coming and they're bringing your supernatural source. Come on, sing. Yumwamba. Come on. Come on. The ravens are coming. Yes, you mwamba. You mwamba. Yes, you mwamba. Hallelujah. Yes, you mwamba. Yeah, yeah, Ali, yeah, you, you, Mamba. Well, you, Mamba, when I, yes, you, Mamba. Let it rain. 